In this video, I'll show you how to connect two or more office networks together so you can share resources like maybe a server database NAS printers. We will be using Unify site magic, so that implies that you do need a Unify console or gateway router. But that also means that this setup will be very easy. I will show you some additional requirements that you need and also how to set up firewall rules so that all of this is still very secure. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Chperny, founder of Apex One IT. So here's what we have going on here. Let's say you have a main office, we'll call it HQ. Is this right here, it has everything going on, right? Your internet connection, you have some kind of router gateway, switches, you know, printers, employee computers here, workstations, server, NAS, whatever else. Maybe there's a database here. And you open up a new location. We'll call it branch one. Similar kind of situation here. You have a couple computers, laptops, it doesn't really matter. Maybe a printer there locally as well. Let's say the employees here need to access a database located on this NAS or server. Now, there's a lot of complicated ways to do this in order to make sure that it's actually secure. You might have heard of things as, as such as VPN, and that's essentially what we're going to do here. And for this kind of particular situation, what I would set up is or use is the hub and spoke topology with Unify Site Magic. So as you can see, you have a central hub that's this blue, which is now your HQ, and the spokes here are all your other branches that can connect. In this example, we just have one, but you can actually have more than one. So what this does is establishes a secure tunnel, you can say, through the internet that anyone here, let's, well, you can set this up however you want, but let's say only staff members, maybe even certain computers, can access the resources off of this NAS. And this can be like Florida and this can be, you know, California. That's where most likely I would use the hub and spoke method and I'll show you, I'll show you that first. But if you have something where, you know, maybe the employees from your HQ actually need to print to a branch, maybe they have some fancy printer here or something uh, at this branch location. So in that case, you probably want to use the mesh topology also uses unified site magic. So I'll show you this method last. No matter which topology we go with, you do, there are two requirements. So you do need to be the owner of both of the unified sites or whichever other sites you're going to add on. And two, one of the sites needs to have a public IP address. Okay, so not a private. You know, maybe an easy way to check that here, let's jump into our console. Let's go here to your Unify site and select dashboard and under when IP, you just want to make sure the IP address that is shown here doesn't start with 192 or uh, 172 or 10 dot whatever. Okay, that's how you know, that's, that's a quick way to know that you actually have a public IP address. So one of your sites just needs to have that. Let's begin with the hub and spoke topology. And this is the one I would generally recommend doing if you're trying to access resources at one site, even though you can do this with mesh. It's just uh, more robust and you'll see as, as we do the tutorial that it's a more robust, better for failover, things like that. But there are two more requirements for hub and spoke specifically for this. So the hub must have the public IP. Okay, so not one of your branch offices, but the main location where you want to get resources from that needs to have a public IP. And two, you're more limited on which console, unified consoles you can use. So it's either that enterprise one, the EFG, any of the UDM like Pro, SE, or Pro Max, or the Unified Dream Wall, that's also acceptable. So if you don't meet those requirements, then just jump ahead with the chapters to the mesh setup, or you know, save this video, come back when you can actually do this and then follow this demo here. Okay, let's start here again in unified.ui.com, and this is the main view here, sites, kind of the homepage. So our HQ, that's the one I label here, uh, Apex One HQ, and you can see I'm using a Pro Max, so that's going to work. And then our branch here will be, let's say we have a Florida location, and that's using a UCG fiber, so that works. Now let's go here, this is our site magic. Click on that, and we are doing a hub and spoke, and then just click get started. I would name this like, you know, maybe Apex One IT. This is our hub and spoke setup. A lot of these settings here might be a bit advanced, so I'm going to try to keep it simple. Generally, you're going to select single, meaning we don't have another redundant hub or anything like that, but that's what the rest of these are. 
So single VPN tunnels. So recall VPN tunnel is basically that connection that we have between the two sites. So in general, again here, is going to be failover. You can do redundant if you have uh, essential backup internet at both locations. That can be super cool because you, you won't even notice if something, you know, if internet goes down on site one, things will just keep working. So our hub, here we only have one option because this is the only unified console that's eligible. And then let's select our spokes or kind of our branch offices that are connecting here. In this example, we're doing Apex One Florida, just click save. Then it shows us our hub that we previously selected. The main thing we want to do here is go in their networks and select which, you know, if you have more than one network, which you should, you're going to select which one you want to share. So click select there, then select networks. And here we have one set up specifically for servers. So we're just going to share that. Click save, you can close that. You can do more than one also if you need to. For example, if maybe you have printers living on some other VLAN network subnet, then go ahead and select that. Okay, and we can't select when failover uh, because we don't have that option here. That's what I was referring to earlier. So that's, if you have that, go ahead and do that. That's how you want to establish that redundancy. Okay, so here, enable subnet overlap. Th this is really when we're talking like small, you know, you're connecting maybe up to like 10 sites. You can do up to a thousand here, but if you're connecting just a few, I mean, really you shouldn't be using this. Just make sure you have different IP addresses set up for your different locations. As you saw here, our network here is you know, 10.23 and so forth and so on. But here we'll disable it and I'll show you at our other branch, we have a different IP scheme set up. So we have here, this is our spoke. If you had more than one, you can select them here as well. So for each one under networks, same thing here, you're deciding from that branch office from which network can users be on in order to access that hub. In our case, it's only going to be the staff network. So if you're on a staff network and from the branch, you can reach out to that server network on the hub. Okay. Makes sense. And my point earlier was that these networks are different. See, this one starts 10, but the second octet here is two, which allows us to work without any problems. If they were the same, that's when you want to use this or really maybe fix the IP address scheme here at the second location. And then so isolate spokes. So if you had more than one branch, isolate means they're not communicating to each other. They're only reaching out to the HQ, which is what we want. Okay. Keep it, I would say as secure as you can, unless you really need to open it up. And then we just click create. So it's going to take a couple seconds. You'll see right now when it's yellow, that's it's connecting. And then when it's green, it's all going to be connected. Okay. So this took about three seconds, the hubs up online. So at this point with everything connected without adjusting any firewall rules, there's things done automatically. The two locations, so HQ and branch one, those two networks we set up, basically anyone, anything connected to that, you know, let's say staff network can reach out and get anything on the server network. If that works for you, that's great. You don't have to establish more firewall rules, but if, for example, you want to restrict, you know, exactly what they can connect to. If you had maybe other servers, something like that, that you don't want to touch, maybe it's like a backup. Okay. You want to keep that more secure. Then we want to establish additional firewall rules. And I'll show you that right now. Specifically, what we're going to do is allow only staff computers to reach out to our NAS only. Okay. Go back to site manager. And what's cool with the hub and spoke method, by the way, is that you only need to establish these firewall rules on the hub side. Okay. You actually don't have to worry about the spokes or the branch locations. So go ahead and jump into your HQ, go to settings, and we want to go to security. And what you'll notice right away is that under VPN. So for our VPN zone, we have our branch name, our branch sites shown here. Okay. So that's what we named branch wine was apex wine, Florida. And then in our zone matrix, we'll see right now that internal and VPN, everything is allowed. So click here. We want to first create a policy that specifically allows our site magic VPN to access just the server that we want. Click on create policy and we'll call this allow, uh, maybe site magic two servers or maybe server. OK, 
Okay, like specifically which one, right? Not not the whole network. Our source zone here is not just any VPN, because for example, you might know there's teleport VPN kind of built into this, open VPN, other ones you can set up. We want to set up site to site and specifically from branch one. So if someone's connecting from our branch one that we named Apex One Florida, this rule applies to them. So we are allowing to zone, not just internal, which would mean all these different VLANs that we have here, right? We don't want that. We actually just want to allow either to a specific network. So you can select that network, but that's kind of redundant. We already have that set up with site magic. We want to restrict to IP. So this is where you can type in the specific IP address of your server here, or if you kind of follow better practice, then you actually have it already set up as an object. And that's under, by the way, profiles objects. So you can create like maybe group of IPs. So if you had like two servers, something like that, you can set that up. So I have Apex servers here. Again, if this is complicated, just specify a specific IP address of that server or printer or whatever else. Okay, and then any port will leave this. I mean, you can restrict this down even more. You can even schedule this to only, you know, be on during business hours, for example. And then description just for yourself. Okay, otherwise we're going to do always and add the policy. So far, what we've done is just allowed that specific connection, but now we want to create a block rule that will block everything else, okay? So it will prevent someone on that staff network to maybe access like a backup server, or backup database, something like that. So let's go again, create policy. We're going to block site magic to just, I guess, everything internal. It doesn't matter what we have. So again, we're specifying site magic, that branch, we're blocking anything in internal on the hub, which includes our server network. But if you want to be more explicit, you, you can do so here as well, right? Choose that server network. But I'm just going everything in internal and blocking, blocking always, add policy. Okay, cool, so we have allow, it allows that connection only to that server, which right here is our destination, our Apex servers that we defined, or whatever IP addresses you put there, everything else is going to be blocked. Okay, so now if you actually go to that location and you have to make sure you're on that network, that staff network that you set up for SiteMagic, you should be able to like type in the IP address, whatever you need to do, however you connect. It, it simulates as though, you know, this computer is actually at your headquarters, right? That's kind of what, what we've done here. Okay, now let's take a look at the mesh setup. And before we do so, if this was helpful to you so far, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and let's continue. Now, let's say we want to do the mesh topology. So this is where you want to share resources, not just the ones located at HQ, for example, but maybe it's at different locations, different offices, you know, different types of resources. So from say HQ, you want the users here to be able again to print there at branch one, and maybe these users to access NAS1 or also use that printer, for example. So that's where we're using the mesh. If you recall the public IP now, just one of these locations needs to have it. Okay, so not both. So even if branch is the one with the public IP, that's fine. The other thing for mesh is that nearly any unified console works for this. You don't have to have, you know, more of the bigger ones like the UDMs. You can have a UDR. Uh, this can also be a UDR. It just can't be the original Unify Express. Okay, so this is even easier. Let's jump here. Well, first, so I'm again here in Unify Site Manager under Site Magic. First, we can remove this one that we established previously. Here we're selecting mesh, as it says, up to 20 sites. Let's click get started. Maybe we'll call this also Apex One Mesh. Okay, we'll use the same sites right now, these uh, two, but we can do even more. Well, let's go ahead and just add another one for fun. <laughs> and then this shows us all the different uh, subnets, VLANs that we have set up. You might possibly only have one. And here, just select the networks that you want to share. So for example, let's say um, on the branch, we want you to just share the staff. Headquarters, we want to do our servers. Uh, maybe also our staff, which is here is called trusted. And at this third site, we're just doing security. Then click connect. And here we have the dots right here that's going to show our status. So let's give that a couple seconds. Okay, that took 
I don't know, like seven seconds literally, all of them are connected now. I should point out the limitation, right? Why sometimes you can't use mesh is if you do have your networks uh, set up in the same way. So like if this was 10.2 and this one here is also 10.2, you won't be able to set this up. So the, as you can tell, all these subnets are all different. So that's why this works. In a similar way, you can also set up firewall rules if you want to restrict it a little bit more in specific which devices. It's just that now you have to set up firewall rules you know, between both locations, whichever ones you're setting up the rules for. So let me just show you, for example, if we go to our Apex One Florida, in the same location settings, security, you'll notice here on the VPN, all the mesh sites will be located here now, right? These were the two other ones that we had selected from the three that we have connected now. So it lives here in the same location and right here on the VPN and the internal wall. Depends what you're trying to control, most likely this way. That's where you add those policies. But recall, you'll have to go to the other sites and also set up firewall rules. So at this point, you're pretty much good to go. If you do need additional help on how to set up, you know, different, these virtual subnets, then I'll have the video up here for you. Otherwise, please like and subscribe for more tutorials like this, or let me know in the comments what you want to see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.